<laughs> All right, it is Tuesday afternoon. We're at Animal Care Hospital in Long Beach. And if you're looking at this guy straight on, you will notice that on this side, he actually has no lump. But on the other side, he has a lump that could be his uh, um, an oral abscess. So we see this quite frequently. This guy has not been eating very well. Dad did use some antibiotics that he had left over from another patient. And it has cleared up his sinusitis. Um, anyway, so we've been treating this guy via telemedicine for a little bit. And today's the first time I get a chance to meet him. So with that in mind, this is his dose of dewormer. He's like, no, you're not going to get that in my head. Um, what we're going to end up doing is probably send you home a little bit more antibiotics. Okay. okay. We'll do this for like two more weeks. And if that area starts to shrink and he starts to eat, then we're on the right track. If not, then we have to go in and remove that pus of plug, okay, and, and maybe even change antibiotics. Okay. We'll know when we get that out. It turns out that reptiles form what's called inspissated pus. It's kind of like cottage cheese, okay? okay? So it doesn't roll out of holes and it's not easily absorbed. Um, it's just a large chunk of, of you know, uh, that just stays that there. just stays there okay uh -huh. so we may end up sometimes and, and again this is one of those species where i see sometimes they'll have those oral abscesses that are just liquid and can't be absorbed easily okay mm -hmm. but if not then it may require some minor surgery okay. the good news is these guys actually heal pretty well they've done dozens and dozens of them cool. over the past several years okay. um so but uh but for all intents and purposes i'm not seeing any more bubbles from the nose uh which would definitely mean that the antibiotics are working the question is mm -hmm. is it going to shrink down that area Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, so now that we've gotten that far, let's uh, let's see if we can get this guy to take some meds. <laughs> okay, for those of you who deal, who deal with these hinged bottom tortoises, I can tell you it is always a trick to get medication in them because by the time you start poking and prodding at them, they're closed up in here and you can't get them out. And the same thing with the back, uh, which makes them really a unique, um, one of the unique species of tortoises. Once I get them this far, one of those things I like to do is just kind of make them mad. Hey, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. I'm so going to make you mad. I'm going to piss you off such big time. Yeah. Oh, get them. <laughs> just takes a little bit of patience. Eventually, they'll go, you know, I can bite that thing, and it might work. So you're doing this. You're not trying to poke them and hurt them. You're just trying to... Get them a little bit irked off because while they're doing this, they're like, man, no one gets inside of me like that because I'm a turtle. It just doesn't happen. Oh, just thinking about it. Urgh, come on. Get it. Urgh. I saw you almost open up. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. He's too sweet. <laughs> You'll open up in a minute. Just take some patience. It's gonna happen. Of course, the other trick is to grab one of the feet and pull them out, and then you gotta pinch the toes to get them to to want to bite you. But we don't want to do that because that hurts. <laughs> you can't just like wedge it in between the beats. Well, if I had something sharper, I could probably get up underneath there. Yeah, it's a Yeah. 
Swallow it down. Alright. Dr. Wins. It all boils down to patience. <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta have more patience than Like I always say, that is not a cocaine habit. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Okay. Ta-da!